Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag, brought to you by Red Raider Outfitter, the fans' favorite since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Well, mighty Joe, it's been a while since you and I have teamed up for a mailbag. That's right. I don't remember the last time. I hope I can still uh, handle this. You know, we'll see. Me too, because there's some questions specifically for you uh, this week. But let's start with the general one. This one comes from an anonymous poster who says, I see Koi Aiken uh, did not suit up for the spring game. Is he injured or uh, as he was much of last year? Now, I saw him perform through much of spring. I honestly don't know if he was injured for the spring game. They may have just been cautious with him because, like you said, he was injured uh, most of last year. Uh, I, I like Aiken. He looked really good in spring. He's one of those guys, I love these kind of athletes, who look bigger and faster than they were. Sir Roderick Thompson is a good example of that. They play bigger and, and run faster than what their times or, or heights are listed at. He's a great example of that. Of course, he led the nation in receiving yards his senior year in high school at Stephenville. Um, I think he has the ability to be a really good player and see a lot of action this year, mind you. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. You know, or, or, are they running him inside right now well, or outside. outside? Okay, okay, okay. I was thinking maybe a Brady Boyd who's inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot of competition in there. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on the outside, he might uh, stand, I think, a little bit better shot of getting on the field some more. Yeah, I think he could be the second or third uh, at one of those outside uh, receiver positions. So you're basically just an injury away from playing a lot. Uh, next question comes from Ryden Fear Fearless, who said, based strictly on the spring game, looks like the offensive line needs work. Um Basically, his question is, does this mean that the offense will continue to call running plays for the QBs as often as they did last year? I don't – me personally, I don't think there's a direct correlation between the two. Um, first off, I think the offensive line is going to be better. I think offensive tackle is still a concern. But – in and I've asked uh, Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator, on several occasions about his penchant for running the quarterbacks, especially since they had so many injuries last year. And he said, look, I, I want to win. We're trying to win ball games. If I feel like running the quarterbacks gives us a competitive advantage, we're going to do it. So I think that's really what it boils down to more than um, personnel on the offensive line. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think if they can, they can block it, they're going to run it. And, yeah. uh, you know, that a lot of that outside running game obviously is going to depend upon what those tackles can do sure. uh, and the run blocking situation. And then if you got a guy like Teeter out there and Cup, uh, those are a couple pretty good blockers, so that's going to help you out. Uh, yeah, and like you said, I think the offensive line will be better, particularly on the inside, than it was last year, maybe quite a bit better. And it's just, you know, maybe maybe the, the, the tackles are a little bit better than we gave them credit for being in the spring game from just the standpoint of look at who they were trying to block. Yeah. Linton and Cole. Yeah. You know, I mean, how many uh, defenses in the Big 12 have a better pair of outside rushers than those two, I we I know we haven't seen them play an actual game yet or not. I, we haven't seen them play an, a, an actual game, but uh, the indications are those guys are going to be tough for anybody to block. So, you know, um, maybe not quite as dire a tackle as as we were concerned about. I hope. And also, the scheme was pretty vanilla as yeah. it normally is on offense in spring games. They would come up with a game plan and scheme uh, for the, those guys. I'm not saying it'd work every time, but maybe they wouldn't just get – I mean, they got dominated, so I, I get the concern. You know, those guys were dominant in the spring game. And, uh, I mean, I don't see how we're not going to at least be concerned about tackles uh, going forward. I just, again, don't know about the correlation between running quarterbacks. Uh, OBX Raider says, who are the fastest receivers on the team? Well, Andre McCray is one of them. Look Fungi. Uh, and a guy you mentioned earlier, Brady Boyd, is a really fast guy. He's borderline 4-4 guy. So um, those are the three fastest. It's interesting that the inside receivers, they're quick, but they're not really fast guys. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, we really need to see McCray come on. Yeah. You know, I mean, he didn't do much of anything. I don't think he had a reception uh, in the spring game. And um, it was it Marion Horn who was on him a lot? Yeah, or? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, hopefully that was a little elaboration, but uh, you definitely need somebody to stretch the field. But, I mean, Loic uh, can certainly do that as well. Uh, he'll just need to become more consistent. You know, one thing we need to be sure of the spring game, too, is, hey, there's information there. There's no doubt. But it's also a scrimmage for a lot of these guys. Some of these guys, especially the new guys, is who we, sh we witnessed really show out for the most part. They had something to prove. Um, half the team, heck, half, many of the veterans didn't even play, you know. So uh, let's see what, if the first two games, if we don't hear anything about Dre McCray, 
then let's let's get worried. But uh, I, I really like his speed. I like his production uh, coming out of Austin P. And um, <clears throat> there's a couple coaches on the staff that were there at Austin P. That know what he can do. So I feel like that speed's going to show up on the field. And I think Fungi's going to have a great season if he if he can stay healthy. All right, next question comes from Tech Freak, our amigo. Uh, I believe it's up in Minneapolis or Minnesota. He asked, uh, did Mark Adams go to another program or is he retired? As far as I know, he has not gone to, gone to another program. I don't know if he's retired, um, but I, as of right now, I am i don't think he's employed anywhere. Yeah, that's that's what I, I'm seeing too. Um, whether he gets back into the business at all, I don't know. I mean, there was you know the stuff that you hear yeah. and how much can you, you trust it? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but apparently his uh, – girlfriend uh, wanted him to get out of the business said that uh, coaching was harming his health and was kind of nagging him on that score so you know who knows if that's true and, and if so uh, what impact it may have but I you know I'm telling you man if I was coaching it would not be good for my health yeah. uh, just being a fan is, is hard enough a lot of times so yeah I agree with that and his indiscretions weren't severe enough to keep him out of uh, coaching I mean you look at some I mean, look at Chris Beard. I know charges were dropped, but still, there are a lot of red flags there. Um, uh, yeah, there are several other coaches. What's his name? No, that, you're just a heck. The Rick, guy, Rick Patino. Rick Patino. There have been plenty of coaches who have made much worse in, uh, indiscretions, mistakes, who uh, who have gone on and coached for more at lesser schools and built back up. So, if Adams really wants to, I think he'll get a job somewhere. Yep. He's too good of a coach. But the question is, does he really want to at this point of his of his life? All right, now we got the Mighty Joe Rapid Fire part of uh, the the mailbag. Nas Raider wants to know what your thoughts are on uh, NIL after having a couple of seasons of it. Is it achieving what they expected to? Did it open up a can of worms that they didn't expect, etc.? Who is benefiting? Who is not? It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, I've made no secret of it. I mean, I'm not a fan of NIL. Um, now, does it uh, help? players financially uh yeah it, it certainly does obviously it, it could not help but do that uh but uh, my problem with it is is that while it may help players in the short term uh i think it does a heck of a lot of damage to college basketball as an institution uh it uh, undercuts completely the academic side of things it uh, basically turns players uh more into mercenaries uh, than like true Red Raiders or Sooners or sure. Cowboys or whatever. I mean, anytime somebody si signs with your, your club, you have to wonder, are they doing it because they have an affinity for the university, because they, right. they love the place, they love the coaches, they love the fans, or are they doing it for a paycheck? You know, and, and that nagging thing tends to, to undercut the relationship uh, between the players and the school and between the fans and the players, which in turn uh, can reduce fan interest uh, in the sport. I mean, if you just don't, if the players don't care about the school, they don't care about you, how can you really have emotional investment in them, in them uh, as well? And then uh, does your interest in college basketball in general wane? I mean, anecdotal stuff I'm hearing from people is, yeah, that's, this is hurting my interest. You know, this yeah. is, this is, this is uh, uh, undermining the, the way I used to feel about things. So, uh, there's that side of it, and I imagine that over time we're going to see declines uh, in attendance uh, and in viewership. And this has been already been going on in college basketball for many years now, uh, but it may accelerate the process uh, in IL. So overall, uh, not a big fan. All right, the next question comes from, from Syntex, who says, uh, where the heck does Money Joe get his amazing hats? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, well, I've got a very specific answer. Uh -oh. This this one right here, MillerHats.com. Okay, I wasn't yeah, really expecting that. That's right, that's so right. It's going to be like you're walking down the street and some guy's like, hey, man, I like your style. Here's <laughs> Not quite. I have people heard, had people I've say that to I've me. Hey, you. man, yeah, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, Miller Hats, they're like based out of Houston, as a matter of fact. So, you know, if you're interested in a hat and you want to help some uh, Lone Star fellas out, then uh, MillerHats.com is the place to go. All right, next question comes from Ryden Fearless, who wants to know, do you feel better or worse about Tech basketball than you did after the same relative point uh, of, of the Adams hire, if you can recall? Which, I, I don't know, that'd be more difficult for me. I think you have a better memory than I do. Yeah, I, I recall it. Uh, and, yes, I do feel better uh, because um, when Adams was hired, um, I was supportive of the hire, but I, there was a little bit of a doubt with me there. I mean, there was a little bit of ambivalence there. 
Uh, you know, I thought potentially it was good hire, but still I was just wasn't completely sold on the hire. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't like with Kingsbury when I, where I was always like, well, I understand why they had to hire him, but right. I don't like to hire. Uh, but I wasn't completely all in. Uh, contrast that with Chris Beard. When he was hired, I was like, man, obviously, this is the guy and he's going to do it. All right. And with McCasland, it's closer to, to where I stood with Beard. Okay. You know, I'm not quite as, as sold as I am with Beard, but I'm not, it's not that far away. You know, I really believe McCaslin is going to do very well here. He may do great here. Uh, and so, and I never felt that strongly about Adam. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And then I think the recruiting so far is coming along nicely. So, it looks to be on a good path. Nice. All right, the final question comes from OBX Raider who wants to know, Monty Joe, uh, who will be the most consistent player on the team? No, we're we talking basketball or I'm football. I'm assuming basketball. Okay, yeah. For you, so. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this Not is that you for don't me. know football. But <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yeah, that's actually a very good question. Not knowing for sure what these new recruits are going to be able yeah. to do. Uh, you know, I think if Papa Isaacs can stay healthy, yeah, and that's that's the big question. Uh, then I think he has the potential to be a very very. Um, solid and uh, regular contributor uh, and, and and not only that but at a very high level as well I mean he's potentially uh, you know maybe like a second string all big 12 type of a yeah. player next year and he will need to be consistent to be able to accomplish that but I, I think he's uh, he can do that I think he's got the right attitude the right work ethic uh, he's focused so he's got the intangibles up here to be a very consistent player. And to be consistent, it does take those intangibles. I mean, you got to, you got to want to all the time. you got to come out uh, ready to play every night. And I believe that uh, Pop has the ability to do that. All right, Maya Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you. Great questions from everyone. Thank you for watching. And until next time.